This is Alan Farley from FX Empire. Let's take a look at this week's top stocks, ETFs, and crypto. First up is FedEx, which reports earnings on Thursday. Now, FedEx topped out right around 275, but 2018 entered a very long a downtrend that was fueled by uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon's plans to abandon FedEx in favor of its own in-house uh, delivery system. Uh, well, the pandemic changed all that. The stock took off in a very strong recovery wave in 2020, returning to prior high in the uh, third quarter, excuse me, the fourth quarter. Now, there's a lot of mixed action right along that breakout level for months. Finally, in April of 2021, takes off, confirms the breakout. Now, that was a real nice buy signal, except it was also a massive uh, bull trap. The stock returned to the prior uh, resistance, excuse me, prior support in August, broke down, failing to break down, coming to the 200-day moving average, bouncing into January, rolling over, and now failing the 200-day moving average. Now, this is all very indicative of a bear market. However, we do have some good signs of the first one being that uh, the over, uh, excuse me, the daily, uh, the weekly is very oversold and pushing into a possible uh, buying a cycle that could get us back up to about the 250 level. Now, if you look back, however, at the monthly, you could see a failed uh, a buy cycle right here. And this is a very complex pattern. It's one to not take lightly because it could do lots and lots of damage. When this comes down here, this can go all the way down here. So we really have to watch uh, uh, FedEx right around the 200 level this week. If it doesn't hold 200, I think it may go down and fill this gap near 150. And that certainly would not be good news. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at Apple. Now, Apple's held up uh, pretty well so far during the uh, uh, during everything that's happened between the pandemic and uh, the uh, problems with uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia. As you can see, it's traded higher in this parallel channel. This parallel channel is held since uh, right here in August of 2020. And uh, now we do have on the on the monthly, we are right in the middle of a monthly sell cycle that uh, is stretching. You can see this line here and this line here is stretching. So that means that bears are uh, lying in wait and it's a very dangerous situation. You can see what's at stake right here on the weekly, which is also going into a, uh, a bear phase. Uh, we've come right back to the 50 week moving average and that's a big deal. You can see that we've got support here in 2019 again and again and we're right here. So if we do break this, I think it's going to be a problem. Now, will Apple break it? I don't know, but the generals tend to be the last ones to go in a developing bear market. And Apple has lost international markets, just like uh, all the Dow components that have pulled out of Russia. And I do think this is going to affect sales going forward, especially with higher component prices. Uh, next up is Tesla. So if we're looking at stocks, big stocks under pressure, widely held stocks, as you can see, Tesla uh, broke out above the January 2021 high, upright on 900. It broke out in uh, the fourth quarter of 2021, came up over the 1200 level where it topped out. Now, it posted a lower high, two lower highs. You see these three highs here? Take a look at this. There's one here, one here, and you can say there's one here. So we have these two lower highs, which probably stand out a whole lot better on the on the uh, daily chart, as you can see, followed by a break of the 50-day moving average, followed by a break of the 200-day moving average. Now, we're right down here where uh, this, this break of the 200-day, we came back up, tested it for four sessions, failed it, tested it, failed it, tested it, and we're failing it again. So if we start breaking down towards 750, uh, that's going to be new resistance right here at the 200-day at the moving average, which is a big deal because that 200-day moving average is also the 50-day, excuse me, 50-week moving average and the 618 retracement of the big uptrend. As you can see, the uh, sell-off descended to the 786 in February, and we could very possibly find our way down there at the 700 level once again in coming sessions. Next up, let's take a look at Dodge. Dodge coin, which is, well, you know, all of crypto is performing poorly. Dodge, uh, Dodge coin is especially poor looking uh, chart. As you can see, we have this little bubble all the way back here in April. The stock, uh, the stock, excuse me, the coin went from about 17 cents all the way up to almost 70 cents and then crashed coming all the way back, giving up. See, this is a broken bubble right here. Uh, all the way back in June, giving up 100%. Now it held this support line. You can see this test, this test, there's a test here. Finally breaking down here, testing it here, testing here, testing it here, heading lower, testing again, heading lower, testing it again. And we have to look forward to right now is a break perhaps of even the 10 cent level. 
Now this is a slow grind. There's not much more, not much further that this thing can go. It's getting no buying pressure whatsoever. Worse yet, take a look how volatility has died since February. We're just not getting those big short squeezes anymore. We got a short squeeze, short squeeze, short squeeze this one. But this is capitulation right here. And that's very dangerous because you never know where it's going to end. So the outlook is, regardless of the oversold signals, not very good for Dogecoin. Finally, let's take a look at the Emerging Markets Fund. Now we need to go back on this puppy. All the way back to 2007, I can see this is when China was uh, spending uh, tons of money uh, building cities out of the uh, out of the wilderness uh, and just a huge industrial growth that lifted emerging markets to this high in the mid 50s. That crashed during the bear market it was range bound, uh, started to come back in 2018. Then the trade war started with China, broke down, tested the lows during uh, the pandemic decline. Well, uh, we got a real nice recovery off that level, returning to the 2007 high in 2021. We actually even broke out for a little bit. It wasn't much of a breakout. You got to find it's right here in January, February 2021. Now, look what's happened since then. And I think probably the weekly is the best way to see it. We actually followed this sort of uh, uh, bull flag down to the 50 day moving average. And then look, the bottoms just dropped out at the 200 week moving average. This is a bear market. And remember, these are the BRIC countries. This is Russia, this is China, this is India, this is Brazil, and all the small countries. They're really gonna be under a lot of pressure in coming years. A part of it is from the deglobalization that's happening with the war in Ukraine, but also Russia will not be in a position to support many third world countries because of their, uh, their account deficits in the future. So a lot of countries say in Africa and in South America are gonna suffer as well because they won't be able to receive uh, those additional funds and China as well is gonna be under some pressure. So this is looking like a real good short sale here. I don't know that you buy this escalating one, but certainly we get a, pull back up into the mid uh, 40s, that's a good time to get on board a short sale.